Hello, um, this is a pairing session on pipeline execution policies, and I'm about to give a short introduction about, um, yeah, about our ideas for the backend part of this feature. Um, so basically, if we, uh, so this is the um, project's pipeline con pipelines controller, and this is like if you want to manually start a pipeline, um, it will go to the create action and then trigger the create pipeline service. And um, here's the create pipeline ser uh, service. And it first creates uh, an instance of the command uh, class, which basically stores all the relevant data for the pipeline. Um, Fabio Fulcan, please correct me if I'm if I'm wrong. This is my understanding of it. Yeah, it is some some kind of a context that you pass through every step of the chain of commands. It's called command, but it's more like a a, a context you can imagine. Okay. Cool. Um, and then there's this um, chain sequence, which is basically all of this. And then we run through all the steps here and um, all of it just performs some action and maybe modifies this command, um, uh, command thing. And um, currently how um, scan execution policies work is um, in this part of the chain. So basically, this is what. So first, we we load the the uh, CI YAML config, and then we run it through the YAML processor and turn it from from YAML into a hash that we can can use. And um, currently, security policies hook in there and then um, inject the jobs into the the YAML config. And now the new idea was instead of doing this, we could process the security policy stuff separately. And yeah, have a bit more control and do the yeah in, inject the jobs a bit later in the chain, and this is what I'm currently working on. So I have this pretty large draft MR. Um, yeah, the, this is this is already the the relevant part here. So we still um, process the YAML config from the project, and then we do the same for the security for the pipeline execution policy content. Um, and this allows us to uh, evaluate the workflow rules separately. And um, then we can we, we do the seeding of the execution policy. Um, so we also do like a, uh, wait, there was another seed here. So seeding, um, Fulcran explained this to me. Um, I hope I get it right. So seeding means we um, attach the, the config to the, context basically so we apply all the variables and, and stuff and then we also turn it into from, from a hash into like another data structure with which has more information um right and then i thought the next step would be after we seeded both the policy at the um ci config yaml uh then it's time to actually merge the policy into the ci config and um yeah this is pretty much what i wanted to discuss today because um, so I made it work the merging part, but I have no idea if I'm if I'm doing it right. Um, yeah, but any, any questions so far, or any any comments on this idea? Um, last time we were we we spoke about wanted to explore the idea of running a create pipeline service within the create pipeline service. Um, All right. So, I don't know. Did, did you explore this idea? So that would be that uh, at some point here, uh, for example, that would be uh, mm, yeah. Go, maybe maybe right. even after after seed or something like that, we will have a, a pipeline execution policy processor or something like that. Uh, and that mm -hmm. will in turn run create pipeline service in dry run mode. Dry run mode is what we use for linter, for, for, for linting the pipeline, which would be running a lot of these steps again, but a finish where line 31, 36, like a stop dry run, it finished there. So it doesn't actually create a pipeline. It just 
it reads a YAML file, it, you know, it validates that, um, expand it if there's any include or anything, uh, checks the limits, you know, does a, a like creates a data structure, uh, but it doesn't it, it doesn't um, create the pipeline, so it doesn't actually persist anything. So you end up with this pipeline in memory that you can use. You have a kind of a pipeline execution mm -hmm. policy pipeline and a normal project pipeline. So you have these two pipelines. And what we will, we will be doing in the end is like take the jobs from this pipeline execution policy uh, and merge it into the, the project pipeline. Um, so that is kind of the idea. By doing this, we will have complete isolation. Uh, so we will not have to inject these, the, you know, in different parts of the pipeline execution process, multiple pipeline execution policy steps. Um, yeah, yeah, true. That's, um, yeah, I, yeah, I remember we discussed this. Um, I had another session with Forkan last week and then, mm -hmm. because I, I started looking into, um, all of this chain and then somehow somehow we forgot about got about this dry run option but um okay. yeah i think i think it makes sense because um while i was working on this it's basically the um content and processing part this is pretty much the same as those steps mm -hmm. so um there was a lot of copy pasting involved and um yeah if we if we use the dry one we we can yeah we can maybe make this more dry <laughs> and uh, cleaner yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. a good idea we thought maybe this will i mean this would be a bit light more lightweight solution because we don't have to run all steps in the chain so we just have uh, we just we just need to run these additional chains steps and that's all so that's why we thought it would be a more lightweight solution than running the whole create pipeline service again in dry okay. run mode of course i mean we can try both options but yeah i mean the last meeting we just forgot about the dry run option and we just went with this way but uh I, i'm not sure which solution would be better in our case yeah. um, i think in, in in both cases mm -hmm. we we still need some kind of merging of the two pipelines yes. right yes yeah. So, so the the step of merge security policy job somehow this needs to stay there, okay? It, it could be that it, um, in that merge security policies we actually do all the other things yeah. together, like um, read the like find out if there is like a, a policy YAML somewhere, read the policy YAML, uh, send it through the you know, YAML processor and do the workflow rules evaluation, maybe, you know, it could even be everything into one single step. If we don't want to scatter steps across the, the entire pipeline process. Um, but That's we had also thing. another problem for the workflow rules because we will have some scenarios that uh, if, the, if the project pipeline does not run because of the workflow rules, but if the policy pipeline will run because of its workflow rules. So there will be some scenarios to solve. So I think we need another step between these uh, evaluate workflow rules. I yeah, maybe two steps. Sure. Yeah, yeah, two steps. Yeah, I mean, we are adding steps. So that's why we just went into the way that, okay, let's add just steps we need instead of uh, running the pipeline create service with dry run mode. Maybe we will have much more problems. Uh, we will have maybe many more problems when we run in dry run mode because it will run each step in the sequence. So maybe this, I mean, I don't know, this uh, way will be more efficient. Um, yes. Um... I'm wondering, could, could there be so I, my main question is, what there can be multiple policy YAML, right? You know, for a specific project mm -hmm. pipeline, right? There could be one at project level, one at group level, or subgroup. 
yeah, uh, that's right. So if there are multiple policy YAMLs, how are we going to do? Are we kind of loading them all, merging them together, and then processing them? Um, uh, yeah, so this is... So if, the, the, if these are all you know separate and it should be independent, with the idea of the dry run, it would be that we were kind of do calling the create pipeline service in dry run mode for every policy job. So Recursive, each of these... recursively, you mean recursively calling the, the policies? Not recursive, but like the, you can have multiple policy YAML. Uh, one, it could be a project level, one, it could be a, 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 or let's say one, a subgroup level, one, a group level. But these two things should not override each other, right? So I'd say like a group level, you have a set of rules that you take, you evaluate, you do whatever jobs are uh, coming from, from that, you add to the pipeline. At subgroup level, you might have, you know, another set of jobs that are taken, evaluated, you know, maybe workflow rules or job rules. Whatever jobs are left, you take and we add to the pipeline. So it's more like a, a for loop for all these policies and evaluate them independently. If we do this thing of like having one step for all the policies, then it means we have to merge these policies. And there can be situation like, what if these jobs are somehow, uh, I don't know, they, they can impact each other, right? Because there could be a way of overriding each other or, or workflow rules maybe might be merged. Uh, you know, we don't want to do any, any of that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so it's like a, yeah, so this is what, what I'm currently doing. Um, this is basically just like merging all the policies together, like the, the config of the policies. But um, yeah, yeah but this means, it, it means like if you have workflow rules defined in one policy and workflow rule, or even top level keywords, as we say, like we can use top level keywords, but since they are evaluated in isolation, let's say variables top level will be merged into job variables for every job. But if we merge two different policies, they, we, we can we can have like, you know, a policy at different uh, hierarchy level that overrides another one. Um, and yeah, actually it's not working. It makes sense expected. to me now. Yeah, it makes yeah. sense to me what you said. It, so it we, is, we, we need to take we, in consideration the fact that we will do this in a loop and the, the importance of having limits because we can't have, you know, you know, you try to create a pipeline and there is you no know, hundred pipelines or hundred times create pipeline service being run in, 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 in the middle. The importance of limits and the importance of, yeah, having as little possible, uh, as fewer as possible policy YAML is super important. Um, because once you have to make a decision, either we, we, we design it in a way that all these can be merged and we process once, or we have a very small number of policies, but each of them can be completely independent. Because you don't want somebody at group level to set some policies and then a subgroup level as an administrator of the subgroup, you create policies and they don't, for example, take any effect because they are overridden at, sub, uh, at group level or the vice versa, you know, you expect something to be uh, enforced at group level and because of the merging, things don't happen correctly. So you have no visibility of what's going on downstream in, in the in subgroups and subgroups might not know what's going on at, at group level uh, in terms of administrators and enforcing policies. So that is the importance, I think, of these policies to be independent. Yeah. So that means we probably need to run the sequence for each policy individually up until this point. And then we can merge it all together and run the rest of the sequence. Well, we could even do that when we, uh, so we have a step, let's call this pipeline execution policy content. The first step you, have, you added. Mm. Yeah, this, this step one? here that can load all the policy YAML files. All right, yeah. Okay, it's a finder of all the policy YAML. Yeah, yeah. And it stores, yeah, it stores them all into the into the command. And mm -hmm. then, you know, uh, we can do everything else, whatever needs to be done, the seeding, 
And then after the seed, we do this merge security policy jobs, which is like a, a loop through all the policies that have been preloaded before. Right. Oh, okay. Extraction, yeah. extractions. And so you have the first and the last really kind of. Ah, I see. So currently I'm putting the merged um, content into um, like command pipeline execution policy content. But, yeah, this should um, be separate. This should yeah, be. So this, this would be. Um, so this would be more like uh, pushing this into an array of content. And then it wouldn't be the merged ones on, it would be. It will be um, the yeah each policy individually. Uh, that should be um, it should be equal to configs, right? Yeah. So it should yeah right it should be, it should just be yeah right it should just be configs. Yes. So yeah, this is like the message. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, I, I'm missing the point. Uh, I'm forgetting. Why do we need to load them beforehand? Oh, um, yes, because because you said in the seed part of the pipeline, we actually exit early if there is no jobs in the pipeline. So this is the why. So for Martin to try, try to, get, to get give us some context, uh, um, when we when we build this pipeline, so there's different steps, and each of them, you know, does something and you know builds up on the pipeline data structure. There's some point is like a, a step called seed. Maybe Andy is gonna show us like in a, in a second. Uh, yeah. This just seed the comment here. The seed step, basically uh, uh, here seed sorry. step. So imagine we are building the current pipeline. Forget about the the pipeline execution policies. The seed step, there is like a check uh, a condition there that shows, that says, if this pipeline is empty, uh, exit, you know, forget about the, the rest of the of the chain, of the steps in the chain, uh, that will exit, which is... Uh... Like, um... Is it not cell? I think uh, it should be uh, see the errors probably. Ah, one seed. Yeah, it should be there. Uh, so basically, the seed errors is basically collecting errors from the pipeline seed, which collects from stage seed, which collects from job seeds. It's a, if there's any errors there, it will exit. And I think this is the reason why we decided to put this, to collect the job, the pipeline execution policies beforehand. So we want to make sure that if the pipeline is empty, um, but you have policies, uh, defined, you still want to add the jobs from the policy to an empty pipeline. Uh, otherwise, it will be that the pipeline is empty, no jobs uh, from execution policies are enforced, and then you just we don't create a pipeline. You know, we say we attempt to create a pipeline, but there's different rules that basically tell us that we should not add any jobs to this pipeline. An empty pipeline is completely ignored. Um, but the with pipeline execution policies, at least speaking with Grant, the expectation was that at least initially we want that uh, even if you have no pipeline, um, like if even if the pipeline is empty, but you have like a pipeline execution policies, we enforce these jobs regardless. So you will have a pipeline just with pipeline execution policies. So to avoid exit exiting early um, from the pipeline creation, we need to have a way of understanding this pipeline is empty, but do we have policies jobs? If we do have policies jobs, let's evaluate those and add to the pipeline and continue the, the creation process. Yeah, that makes sense. And also also what I understand that seed does is um uh Fulcran showed me this last last time. So it creates like a um, data structure for every build. And it also um, is able to assign like variables and stuff to 
to build. So I thought this will also be helpful if we're seed the, seeding this separately, that the variables for scan execution, uh, for pipeline execution policies are applied for the pipeline execution policy jobs and um, yeah, and yes. uh, for the for the rest, so we have more more isolation if we see them separately, right? Yes, because when yeah, in the context you have basically what variables can be used to evaluate this uh, this YAML configuration, and if you know in the pipeline execution policy project, you define some variables, or even in the policy. YAML, whatever, you know, the way we are doing today, you can define some variables there. They need to take precedence. You can use these variables only in the context that evaluates the pipeline execution policies. You don't need to add these variables in the in the main pipeline, right? So in in a way, it's like the pipe, the main the, the project pipeline is not affected by the execution policy. The jobs are not affected by that. Only the Pipeline execution policy jobs are affected by those variables. So you can, you the advantage of having separate pipe, create pipeline service with separate context is that we can decide what variables should be used there, um, and what not. You know, we might decide okay, there's only a set very limited set of variables that can go in here, and not everything else. We could even do that as well. We can still do this by not doing the dry run. Uh, option right we can also do i mean okay right now uh, it is not right that we merge each policy into a single hash and then process it's not right i know but mm -hmm. we can still do this by these steps that andy already implemented okay in the pipeline execution policy content uh, step okay we are merging okay let's say we don't merge them but still we can just run the seed step each for each uh, policy and then after the seeding process we can just merge all policies into a single into this main pipeline so i mean i, I i'm just uh, not feeling good about the idea about uh, idea that we run this uh, whole uh, pip pipeline create pipeline service with the dry run mode because mm -hmm. we can we can i don't know we, we may face some unknown problems that we don't know for now. So that's why it feels safer to just run the uh, steps that we need here, instead of running the whole uh, create pipeline service. Yes. Um, I, I, I'm not, you know, 100% um, convinced either. But this is why we need to have a POC so we can mm -hmm. yeah. in, look in details and see what's actually happening. Because mm -hmm. there's pros and cons even with the current merge requests uh, the, the, from the POC merge request. The POC merge request, the complexity there is that every step is reusing the existing context of the project pipeline creation. And isolating that it can be very complex because it means you need to have make sure that for a specific step, you're not reusing the context of the main pipeline, but you need to create a very specific context with variables that need to be evaluated for that. Is that we are mixing the two contexts. You know, one is the project pipeline and one is a policy pipeline, right? So the idea of running the create pipeline service in dry run mode, or it doesn't have to be maybe dry run mode, it could be in a, a separate mode that only runs yeah. minimal set of jobs. It's like a dry run plus, you know, skip some other jobs that are not yes. very necessary. But the idea of running that, in a, it, it, it gives some more isolation in a way that we can indicate upfront what is the set of variables and, and you know, the context that that needs to run in. Uh, and we can set that up front. The same way we, we decide, okay, don't read the, the configuration file as a normal you know, GitLab CI YAML pipeline, a, a YAML file, but I'm gonna send, tell you which is the content that you have to evaluate. So even that, um, it, it would be 
good that you know we create a separate pipeline. It's like a separate pipeline in in memory, right? With stages and and everything. And then we have a, a, an API, internal API that says, take this pipeline and merge it into the project pipeline. There are two separate things, you know, separate jobs. They each job have separate YAML variables and the sort of separate settings uh, because they've been evaluated in complete isolation rather than being evaluated within the context of the same pipeline. Um, so I, I think this conceptually makes it easier to manage, but we need to understand what are the heavy steps that we're going to run there. Uh, so I, I think regardless, with this approach or the other one, we still have heavy steps we're going to run. The workflow rules, evaluating job rules, all the, you know, the uh, seeding part, the, uh, these are, or the YAML processor, these are heavy steps in terms of performance that we have we we are we are noticing. The other small bits are almost inexistent in our performance metrics. Uh, so uh, Andy, if you can go back to the the create pipeline service. So of all on the list of all these steps we see here, there's so, there is a few of them that are really heavy in our metrics whether we see with running on GitLab.com. Uh, you know, config process is heavy. Um, uh, the seed is heavy. Create is heavy because it's all the persisting, you know, could be a hundred, uh, thousands of jobs. Um, the evaluate workflow rules is heavy. Um, so there's some blocks here that are really heavy in terms of performance. And, and they take 80% of the pipeline creation you know, time. If we have to repeat those for policy uh, jobs, it means the pipeline creation time will take twice, three times longer. The more policy jobs we have, the longer this, this takes, right? Um, because these jobs are all the jobs we actually need to create a pipeline. Uh, from, from a policy angle. Some other jobs like seed block, remove unwanted chat ops, um, the skip part, the rate limit, these all are really, really fast steps that in our metrics, you know, we, we can add them, you know, the, 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 um, they don't sum up too much. So this is like why, okay, I'm in two minds between, should we do this? The way it's done today, where we select very specific, but we then inject and we start to mix responsibility between pipeline execution policies and normal pipeline. So it becomes very difficult to, to figure out which of the steps are related to pipeline execution policies. I know they have the names, but we are mixing the two concepts together versus we just inject one, one step that deals with pipeline execution policies and you can do in iterations and uh, like iterating through the, the policy YAML. And um, it's much better from a conceptual perspective and from a complexity because you say, just evaluate those in isolation with their own context. Uh, we're not mixing or reusing the state of the main pipeline. And this is in my opinion where a, there's a lot of source of complexity and bugs can crop up because essentially what we're doing here, we are reusing the same context of the pipeline creation, the main pipeline, the, the existing state, and we are trying to modify that state with policy, uh, policy file, with jobs coming from the policy files. And it will be best instead if we Evaluate the policy YAML in complete isolation. Get the in-memory pipeline that comes from that. We just we discard the the, the pipeline, uh, you know, uh, object. We just are interested in the jobs and the stages, and then we merge those. Um, that conceptually feels a lot easier for me to 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 think about it, and for somebody else to maintain it than injecting. One, two, three, four, five, six stage, six 
steps. They're actually all related and dependent on each other. So they don't become, these are not like a, yeah, independent. Yeah, I mean, we steps. could also do like a lightweight um, great pipeline service just for scanning scripting policy. And so they said probably don't need to run through all of the steps for the scanning execution policies. And maybe we can have a class and then inherit from create pipeline service. And then this would just like return this in memory pipeline somehow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh... And, yeah, um, I, I think I think sorry, it, yeah, it has to be has to be something like a a lighter weight than a drive mode, the dry run. Mm -hmm. uh, we still may want to have I don't know. Uh, will we want to rate limit or do we skip rate limit? Uh, you know, we could skip some of this. Um, yeah, we could skip we some should, of those. Yeah, we should like, definitely I know, skip I, I, I the assigned partition policy. I, I assigned partition. Mm, that's interesting. We should also skip because we don't need to do anything with the database. No, but then when this will be part of the API of of moving jobs from one pipeline to another one, we will we will have to change the partition ID. Um, I see, I see. Yeah, so this will be part of the pipeline API. It's an important API to say, I want to move jobs from this pipeline to this pipeline. And so that means that we, we would even, like we wouldn't do the merge after seed, but we would do it before or after create, like before we persist the actual data or we actually persist the pipeline data and then afterwards we move jobs to the pipeline. Uh, no, that could be done before. Okay. Uh, but like, for example, assign partition, it, it makes sure make sure that the you know a pipeline is is composed of you know, the pipeline record and there's like a stages and then inside each stage there's jobs uh, at a simple level. All these three layers, you know, of objects, they need to have the same partition ID. Uh, so currently, it is is assigned to a pipeline. The partition ID, depending what's the current partition, let's say it's partition three. Uh, if the pipeline gets partition three, then stages and jobs, they all need to get the same partition three. If, you know, let's take the example, even if it's extreme, I don't know why their hearts are showing up. Uh, but let's take the example where we have a pipeline is being created, the main project pipeline. Uh, we're in the process of evaluating the the project policies and in the meantime the we create a new partition right the, the job pipeline has partition id3 and all the, these jobs have partition id3 uh, but then as we evaluate the project you know the the, the policy yaml and um, we have a new partition being created and now the partition id is four so this policy the, the policy pipeline, you know, where I, we are trying to evaluate jobs, they, they can have a different partition ID there. And as we move jobs to the to the other pipeline, we need to make sure that the partition ID matches the target pipeline. So I this will be I think this will be part of this API that we need to have. Yeah, I, I think we can find a way to pass a partition the current partition ID into the you know the sub calling the Yes. Great pipeline server. So yeah, we can find a way to do yes. that, probably. Yes, yes. Or you, you could, yes, it could be done that way. It can be done that we skip the the build, the first the first part, and we actually send a pipeline object already mm -hmm. initialized, which is the the existing pipeline. So any jobs you are there, they already have the same partition. Uh, but I, yeah, that's we can refine this. I don't want to add too many details right now because we can get confused. But we can refine yeah. this to be more optimized. Um, I would cool. say that well, let's try with the dry run. Even we know that it's it's heavy, 
the dry run itself and can be optimized, can be streamlined. We can introduce a mode that actually can disable some of the steps uh, specifically. Um, so, so we can make it leaner. But it's better that in my, in my opinion, we start with a concept that is simple to, to understand and simple to manage. Uh, and then we, we optimize it. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, it sounds, sounds like a good idea. Um, may, one more question because I have to leave in like 10 minutes. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to ask about the merging strategy. So what I have here is uh, wait, this one. Um, so basically it runs through the seeded pipeline stage attributes and then um, it looks for the seeded um, policy pipeline stage attributes and tries to find the same stage. And then um, it's, yeah, it's, um, yeah, it just injects the builds from the policy pipeline into the other seeded pipeline. And this felt a bit hacky to me. And um, yeah, I was wondering if you already had ideas about how we do this merging and how this, or what the seed actually works like, the seeded data. Uh, let me see. I need to check the code. But uh, if we do the dry, dry run strategy, we will not have this seed. We will have two pipeline objects, let's say two. Yes. We will have two pipeline object, objects and each pipelines, each pipeline has its own uh, stages also builds. So we will deal with the oh. objects, not the hashes. Yes. Oh, that, that would be... That would be way easier, actually. Yeah. Uh, even if, even, yeah. if, even if in the you have the see the command dot pipeline seed. In that object, instead of having stages attributes, uh, you should be able to have stages as well. Oh, Just, um, so you can yeah. use sta stages and as as object. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you go seed seed pipeline, um, yeah. Well, maybe I can um, do something like this, and then um, and then see if I can um, look into the the commands um, pipeline pipeline seed and see how it looks. I think I, I think I tried stages, but somehow uh, it didn't work. Okay. We are assigning um, this in the populate uh, step of this oh, chain. Oh, so it's, it's later. Yeah, it's like in the populate state. Yes. So it's after, so it's okay, after populate then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So command pipeline seed. Uh, it's a bit larger. Yes, it's populated. Uh, no, you know, but the pipeline seed. Ah, uh, stages. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, I see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, you should have stages yeah. there. Yeah, okay. It, it's like the, there, are, there are stages, there are models. This is stage model uh, object, but it's not persisted yet. And this is why, you know, the pipeline ID is not there yet. But it's, it's defined, it will be defined mm -hmm. later. Okay. But you, you, you have a data structure, you have a, a data structure there. And CI stage? Um, has uh -huh. many builds, or, yeah. Uh, yes, you. I think at this point there will not be builds yet. There will be statuses. Ah, okay. So it so because builds bridges and it's it they're very specific um, types. I think at this point you should be able to do a stage first and then dot statuses in in okay. your time in, in your terminal. Um, that statuses. Oh yeah, yeah. it it gets jobs there. So this could be a type build or well, statuses is more like a a, a super uh, super set mm -hmm. of all the jobs. And uh, this is I think this is why I didn't use stage because um, I couldn't find the builds in there. But yeah, statuses makes sense. And for the um, if we if we do the dry run, we probably get something something similar, like we would get the pipeline and it would have CI stages. Yes. And, you you um, do pipeline. Yeah, pipeline, 
you can you could even do pipeline dot statuses i think you should be able to do that as well mm -hmm. uh, and then you get all the jobs and each job will have their own stage as well it, 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 their own stage reference so and then you say okay well, you could do that, or you could do pipeline of stages and you know iterate through every stage and take the jobs for each stage and add it. Uh, and we can look into that specific logic. Okay, I have two pipelines, and how do I merge them? Uh, okay, yeah. I think the most important part for now is load the all the YAML uh, policy YAML files that could exist. Uh, store them in the in the command, so we have a list of those, and then run create pipeline service for all each of those. So we have it, it can be maybe just a single uh, step in the create pipeline service uh, chain mm -hmm. that loops through the various policy YAML, uh, evaluates those in you know use a dry run the pipeline that comes out. We take the jobs that we merge into the main pipeline and we go to the next policy YAML file, evaluate to dry run the pipeline, the job that comes out, we merge it. Uh, we could do that and then we can figure out, okay, you know, what's the best way to refactor this? Uh, for now, we don't really, we, we want to use like a, a simple way of injecting this behavior. Um, what do you think, yeah. Shukran? Uh... Yeah, it makes sense. But now I have another question in my mind. So, do in general, currently in on production, do we run this uh, or do we show this uh, security policies in pipeline linter, pipeline editor? Do we show this right now? Uh, no, we we don't. So, so we are not going to show editor. Um, but it doesn't appear. Well, it would be nice if if people if they edit their pipeline can see the actual um pipeline how it looks with security policies but uh mm -hmm. not, mm -hmm. not right I mean, pro probably we will show by default if we do this approach but the problem is that if we do if we use the dry run mode here we will skip these pipeline policies by default uh in the pipeline in our pipeline linter so that's yes. why i think we are we are gonna need other uh, attributes other than the dry run Maybe policy True, run or something. Yeah. yeah, I think we need this anyway because otherwise the dry one will yes. uh, run this policy policy stage a again. And again, then we have like yes, a a infinite. Yep, yep. exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. And the, I I know we are on, on time and you need to go, but uh, I know this is also time sensitive. So please do not hesitate to arrange another meeting again today or tomorrow if you work on something and if you stuck on something because i know because it is a, a bit complicated area and right now we are changing from this approach to another approach thanks yeah that, that's uh very much appreciated mm -hmm. and yeah thanks for your time and all the explaining that's that's super helpful yep, no worries. Cool. um all right um yeah thanks so much and i'll um try to explore this dry run option and um, I think it will be great because this MR is already like 800 lines. And I think if we do the dry one and we have just one chain part um, that will make it way, um, yeah, way smaller. All right, um, I, I need to drop. Uh, thank you again. And okay. I'll um, share the recording later. Okay. Um, all right, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, bye. thank you so much. Thanks a lot.